And yeah, like, like what, why did it made, I think the WNBA is wrong in the way they're treating her. And let me know what you guys think about that opinion. Um, yeah, I definitely agree that the WNBA is wrong to make that call and decision, especially considering Elena Del Don. She's the former MVP. Like she's represents the league really well. And I feel like that's kind of a statement that the WNBA is making by not supporting such an influential influential player like her herself Mm -hmm. for me I think it just is selfish of the league because I feel like they just want her to play because they know people will watch her like she's obviously really good she's entertaining to watch and so they're putting that above her health and I just have a really hard time wrapping my mind around how um like for example Tina Charles has asthma and they deemed her like medically ineligible or whatever however they're saying it um so she'll get paid to sit out but Elena Deladon isn't deemed medically ineligible and yet it's the same thing they're both immunocompromised um so it just doesn't really make a lot of sense to me just to add on a little bit too Elena Deladon sourced in an article in the Players Tribune don't know if you guys read it she Mm -hmm. claims that she takes 64 pills a day that's absurd and I didn't realize it was that bad either because like, you know, people talk about Lyme's disease and they're like, okay, like some people have been able to get over it or whatever, but you know, it, it's affected her game a lot. And the fact that she won a WNBA championship last year while also having an injury of a knee too, like you have to also realize like the health of the players comes first. You see plenty of guys in the NBA now with the bubble Adam silver just does a better job with, you know, as a commissioner, because also I think the reason why the WNBA, the players are getting some pushback about it is because the WNBA does not make a lot of money from revenues. So they need the players to play in order to generate that, which is again, very selfish, but they make $25 million from revenues while the NBA makes $7.4 billion. It's just, that's again, a huge disparity, right? The average salary for a WNBA player is 116,000. The average salary for an NBA player is $7.7 million. That also I think is attributing to it because the WNBA is trying to create a better image However, I don't think that's going to boost morale around their sports because Elena Deladon is arguably the best player in the game, arguably. She, you know, she was last year. And not having her in, I mean, maybe you guys can speak on that too. Just like, do you think that's going to boost morale? Like, I, I mean, I just claimed I wouldn't. But do you think that the WNBA can still get people to, go, to back behind them without, uh, you know, being so fair to Elena Deladon? I'm not sure. I think it's a tricky situation. Um... But I feel like personally for me, if anyone who's read the article, did you read the article, Mike? I did. Like, I personally, like, it turned me against the WNBA as the league. Like, I'm definitely on Elena Deladon's side. And while I think it is a tricky situation, like you said, they're not making the revenue. So they kind of need those players to play more than the NBA does, I feel like, at least in my opinion. Um, but like if she's taking 64 pills just to play in normal situations, like under completely normal circumstances, what makes it, what makes anyone think it's okay that she can play under such like severe circumstances, still taking 64 pills. And she had back surgery that she's recovering from. Like, I just don't really understand the need to play basketball right now, if I'm being completely honest, but that's kind of a different direction. Um, I also think her not playing is not going to affect, like, the views or anything like that. Like, WNBA fans watch the WNBA for the players. Like, they have that, like, kind of intimate following because it's so small with the players. Like, if you've ever been to a game, you're sitting front row. Like, it's very, like, those loyal fans are going to watch it. And, like, there's other players. Like, yes, last season what the Mystics did go DC was like really amazing obviously but like there's all those amazing players like Diana Taurasi or Sue Bird that are going to keep those views coming in yeah no again I I agree with that I think it just the the problem with the WNBA and I spoke about this on a past podcast that I did with teammates of yours it's just the problem with their with the fact that they can't market well enough to their fan base because of the money issues they have I reported on how like a lot of the teams aren't profitable because of the, the money issues they're having. And again, I, yeah, I, I agree with you in, the, in that sense of that there is such an intimate relationship with the players that there, and there might not be a huge view 
disparity or difference. The one thing I'll push back though on, it's just that if you don't have Elena Della Don or Tina Charles in the game, those are just like two iconic players for people who actually know the WNBA. Like, again, I'm not like as big a viewer as some other people, but those players, at least I know for a fact, because Elena Della Don was just incredible at Delaware. She's been incredible in the WNBA, um, you know, that kind of stuff. But shifting to a different topic, you know, obviously you guys follow the NBA as well. So just the situation within the bubble. So interesting enough, like there's been a lot of interesting videos I've seen on YouTube, ESPN, all that kind of stuff. The bubble life isn't ideal, but do you guys still have a, a lot of excitement for what the NBA could be like when it starts July 30th? Or do you think the, the bubble circumstance is making it more unwatchable? Um, personally, I'm excited for whatever they put out there. I mean, I have no expectations really, but I'm just excited to see some form of basketball and I'm a big NBA fan. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I think it'll just be interesting to see how it all plays out because it's something that's never happened before, you know? So now right. that's how this is going to go. So it'll be interesting to see. Yeah. It's like history. I mean, I think if it's a terrible fail or something, like it's still like we're watching it. It'll be interesting. And they're trying to do something that no other league is attempting to do. What do you guys think of the uh, anonymous snitch line that's been developed there? So have you guys read into that, the fact that you can just snitch on a player oh, yeah. uh, for not following the rules? Tell me a little bit about what you guys think about that. <laughs> would you be a type of player that would snitch on someone <laughs> in that situation anonymously? Um, I personally wouldn't, but, you know, you guys can go into what you yeah, guys Yeah, that's about. tough. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's they're also like adults. It's it's kind of confusing. With it's not like they're college players where, like, they're not being paid or something. So it's kind of that fun. The snitching. I don't know. That's a that's a tough one. Mhm. Mm I agree. Yeah, I mean, it's also just a fact that like you know Dwight Howard got on the amount of snitch line the other day, and he's because he wasn't. I didn't see that. that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, it's just like it's it, it's. <laughs> from my perspective it's like you should follow the rules but it's also if you're on campus and you're just not wearing a mask like you know it's like you're in a pretty safe situation in the bubble right the only thing that yeah. gets problematic is people leaving campus and coming back right because mm -hmm. Florida's a hotbed and that's a little yeah. bit of a problem there um I guess that the last thing I wanted to touch upon 